Hey guys, welcome back to Custom Hearthstone Cards, where you may notice something is a little different. While I do think the automated voice works much better for honest cards, I can understand it can be a little irritating for longer videos, so I'm going to try working off of a script and we'll see how it goes. Regardless, let's talk about the inspiration for this video and... I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed in Blizzard. When I first played the Witchwood Monster Hunt mode, I quickly discovered through Toki that the game actively tracks the order of cards in your deck. Why is this disappointing? No cards in the game take advantage of this. And before you say tracking in Gnome Feratu, the thing is, since there's no way currently of knowing what cards are at the top of either deck, these cards really might as well affect random cards in each deck. So, without further discussion, here are a set of cards I've designed around affecting the order of cards in either player's deck. Ready? To kick things off, we have a fairly simple design. The 5 mana 5 4 Bronze Spellbinder with the Battle Cry. Place the last spell you and your opponent played on top of your deck. What I like most about this card is that it's kind of this clown fiesta card generator, but at the same time it does it in a way that both players know what's happening, and the opponent actively has some time before both spells hit the field. I honestly don't have a ton more to say about it, I don't see it being too overly powered and it could make for some crazy situations, such as putting an Angoro pack from your opponent's deck on top of yours. Overall, in my personal opinion, just a fun start to the idea of placing cards in specific spots in your deck. Obviously, however, this mechanic would also include rearranging cards in your deck, and thus we have a battle plan, a one mana warrior spell that lets you look at three random cards from your deck and place them in a specific order on top of your deck. I think this card would create interesting situations. For example, do you want to put Armor Smith on top of the deck to try and take advantage of your small board of taunts? Or do you need that execute sooner because you think he's going to play a big minion soon? I also think you could create some interesting card draw combos, for example putting a Cold Light Oracle at the exact top so you draw the next two cards on that next turn. And even as another theory craft, perhaps it could be used turn one in a mid-range deck to try and set up the perfect curve. All things considered, it's a simple design, but I think it has a lot of application. Next we have the 4 mana mage spell, Arcane Surges, which places 3 copies of a discovered spell into your deck 3rd from the top, 6th from the top, and 9th from the top. Once more, this is a fairly simple design, however there is a little bit to unpack here in regards to all of what it could entail. For example, in a fatigue game, this card adds 3 extra cards into your deck. The biggest thing is that it adds consistency to the next few turns. For example, getting a flame strike, you always know you have a board clear coming in a couple of draws. Probably the most concerning thing about this card would be playing around three extra fireballs would certainly not be fun in a lot of matchups. If, for example, you have 18 health, the first time you see one of those, you know you are dead in a couple of turns. That being said, with that exception, I think it would be interesting to see some counterplays from knowing two of the upcoming spells in your opponent's deck once one hits the board. For this next card, I'm happy with it because I'm not honestly sure how it would be used. Sowing Seeds is a 2-mana druid spell that places your 3 highest cost cards at the bottom of your deck, whether that's from your hand or deck. If you have any ideas how to use this card well, please let me know, but for now, I'll talk about the 2 decks I would try with a spell like this. The first thing I thought of, since this card targets the highest cost cards, regardless of minion or spell, would be a Spiteful Summoner, potentially fatigue deck, with Tree of Life. Basically, the idea is since it's at the bottom of your deck, Spiteful is guaranteed to work, and you can get two 9-drops. With those, you can trade and try to avoid damage, but once Fatigue starts and you're low on health, you have those Tree of Lives all the way at the bottom to help you. My other idea would be a card draw filled token deck with Deathwing and a couple other large legendaries. Since you could take him even out of your hand, throw him at the bottom, and try to finish with him, clearing out any board advantage, hopefully for a win. Again, those are just some theories, let me know if you have any ideas how to use this card. Looking at Shaman, we have Earthen Ring Invoker, a 4 mana 3 5 that, when played, pulls your two cheapest spells to the top of your deck. My favorite part of this card is that the results from this can probably be carefully managed. Most Shaman spells serve very specific purposes for being in the deck, so in an aggro deck this could pull lightning bolts and rock better weapons and maybe wind furies. 
While in a control deck, you might be looking at more healing rains, lightning storms, and even potentially hexes, depending on how your deck is built and what you've already drawn. I think overall this card could encourage some clever deck building, for example, maybe you want to draw something like Feral Spirit more often and use that. But then you might have to replace some other cards in your deck and rethink how the deck will operate. Once more, I think it's a simple design with a lot of implications, and I would love to experiment with this card. Lastly, I wanted to create a legendary version of this effect, a card that wouldn't work unless it puts cards in a specific location within a deck. Introducing Commander Asgalor, the 7 mana 6 7 demon that puts suffocations on top of your opponent's deck. But what's a suffocation? It's a 0 mana spell that allows your opponent to draw a card for 4 damage. In other words, since they draw that card at the start of their turn, Asgalor forces your opponent each turn to either not draw a card or take 4 damage. And and while that's the basics, this card does have some interesting counterplay. For example, your opponent might have a removal, quickly deal with Asglore, but they can then draw an extra card much later in the game. On the other hand, however, if your opponent is low on health, this card could be devastating, simply stopping them from drawing cards until they destroy Asglore, or better yet, for you, until they die. All things put together, this card kind of treats low health and top decking the same way Lotheb treats spells attempting to assure victory. However, unlike Lothab's battle cry, there are a lot of other aspects that could let this backfire. All of that being said, it's the type of card I don't want to be good. I don't want to play in a meta where people win by dropping this minion and forcing you to choose your poison. Conceptually though, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thank you for watching. This was definitely a little bit harder than my other uh, custom Hearthstone videos just reading off the script, but they were some fun cards and I think it worked out pretty well. If you enjoyed this and you aren't subscribed yet, you might want to. I'll be posting another custom Hearthstone video in just a few weeks. And of course, you can go ahead and check the eye icon for a playlist featuring many other custom Hearthstone concepts videos. All of that being said, again, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day everyone! Toodles.